look at this so much space you can actually move houses and speaking of dryers though you do get one and it's right here hello everyone over here is the Geno Kongu guys this is the third generation Geno Kongu and I'm going to tell you all why it's one of the most interesting small vans here in the EU market guys and especially globally now the reason why it's very interesting is because of a history it has Geno just like other French car manufacturers like the PSA group have a long reputation in the small van segment, in the light utility vehicle segment. However, the name historically was not always Kongu, but one thing that remains consistent is that historically, they were always based on the same chassis as their B-segment cars, the small Renault vehicles. The first generation Renault Kongu was based on a Renault Clio, but then the second generation Renault Kongu saw a bit more build. It was in fact bigger in every dimension that uh, it earned popularity amongst families, guys. They saw it as a useful alternative to the Renault Espace and the Renault Scenic. Now, this is the third generation Renault Kongu. Very revised, very interesting, and most of all, far more desirable than ever. This Renault Kongu costs 33,000 euros. Is it good value for money or not? We're gonna find out in a moment, everyone. Let's get on with this review right now. So I want to start by talking about the front of this Renault Kongu. The front design looks very much like the Renault Megane for some reason. It reminds me of the Renault Megane, the way they've done the front grille and also the way they've done the side lights, everyone. If we look at it from this angle, there is some strong Megane resemblance. First time I saw this was on the Renault Master and the Renault Trafic. Um, the Renault Trafic and Master had these hubcaps since the early 2000s or in the very, very late 90s, guys. And now the Renault Kongu also gets the same privileges as they do. Now, if we analyze the way the hubcaps have been designed, they look like a reference to one of the hubcaps of Renault Espace in the year 2000s. Like, we're talking very late 2000s, guys. The Renault Espace did have um, a hubcap like this, but in plastic, and it was big. It was covering the whole wheel. Here is the rear of the Renault Kongu, guys, and it is here. I had this feeling it has this strong Dacia vibe to it. Uh, it reminds me a bit of Dacia, because if we look at the side and everything, it looks ever so slightly smaller than the previous generation Renault Kongu, but on the other hand, it looks far more desirable. But I love the detailed rear lights, guys looks very good everyone there are a number of advantages you get with this Renault Kongu and if you do feel like maneuverability is not enough especially when it comes to parking don't stress out guys you do get parking sensors at the front and at the rear and you do get rear view parking cameras guys too bad you don't get 360 degree parking cameras but at this point in this segment it is really hard to debate about 360 degree parking cameras given that this is electric as well you get actual air vents down there guys now over here at the front is your recharge cap everyone ah this is how we open it there you go guys the recharge cap However, it's not all pink roses, guys. There are some problems we're going to address right now. When it comes to reliability, Renault, just like other French car manufacturers, have not always been the best. They were great when it came to engines, but when it came to electronics, no go, guys. Let's hope that this Renault Kongu is an exception. Now, over here is the rear of the Renault Kongu. This over here is the hinge for the rear doors. I've noticed this problem with uh, Renault utility vehicles in general. The Master had this problem. The traffic also has this problem, and now this Kongu also has the problem. The exposed hinges. Now, many of you will wonder what's the problem with exposed hinges. The problem is, first of all, it looks a bit out of place. The whole surface looks very smooth and everything, and then this sticks out a bit odd, as if it was an afterthought. Secondly, in long terms, they can catch rust. They can get very rusty that you can no longer use the rear doors properly, which means the door will basically fall off that we're talking 10 years from today. So who really cares today? Guys, in a moment, we're gonna check out the interior, but I wanna show you some very exciting features. So, so there's no B pillar, okay? This is the A pillar. We call this A pillar. Over here would be what we call your B pillar. 
the B pillar is absent, guys. It's very innovative. Instead, this would, would uh, become your B pillar, and this part of the side door would also become part of your B pillar, if we're talking about safety, guys. Now, it doesn't end there. It gets better. And there you go, guys. You have extra volume of space. And to prove it to you, I'm going to demonstrate something. Uh, handle right here. Does this sound convincing to you guys? Look at this. So much space. You can actually move houses and I can confirm. Since we were in the middle of covering cargo space, let's cover it completely, guys. Now, I'm standing at the rear of the Renault Kongu. If we look all the way to the front where you see that glove box, there's so much space, guys. So much space. It's really, really interesting. And also you get tether points on the side and you can also have an option of having a protection on the floor which is something i would straight away go for because you do not want to be denting the metal in long terms and you get a 12 volt socket right here is anybody thinking of going for camping i have some amazing things to show you guys this is what you want when you get a Renault kongu guys makes it even more practical than ever if you are using this Renault Kongu for logistics purposes, so transporting parcels from A to B, you, do not be, you won't be needing this uh, nice uh, shelf, guys. But if you're going to be using this Renault Kongu for plumbing, construction, or even for video making, this can be a perfect tool. Now we have to check out the interior, guys. So we have to make room for the passenger seat. Okay. <clears throat> Now for the exciting part, the interior of the Renault Kongu, guys. Very much revised. It looks very interesting and it looks just like other Renault models of today, guys. The Renault Clio, the Renault Megane, you name it, guys. So the layout has become a bit more driver centric, which is something I did find questionable because it's, uh, well, it's not really a Renault thing. They had to be more symmetrical, but it seems like this thing is tilting towards the driver's side. Okay, fair enough. Now, when it comes to the interior, hard plastic is something expected, and it's good because it's easy to live with, easy to maintain. If ever it gets dusty or sandy, you know the right thing to do, guys. Grab a tissue, up, have it clean, and next thing you know, it's mint. Now, the overall layout of everything is really good. Everything is at my reach. And I've noticed the reoccurring theme is that compared to competitors, the interior has a very linear design. You can adjust the steering wheel. So steering wheel can be adjusted only up and down but you cannot move it in or out guys so if you want to adjust that part adjust your seating adjustment there you go guys manual seating adjustments i did not really expect electric seating adjustments see hmm manual seating adjustments are good just there's no lumbar support but you don't really need this because you won't be using it for road trips and if ever you do it's going to be an economic road trip because this is electric. Now, before checking out the interior, we just have to admire the door. It opens at a 90 degree, guys. So there's ease of entrance and it's really, really practical. This is the first time I've seen a front door of any car open 90 degrees. This is awesome. All right, everyone, the interior of the Renault Kongu. And so there's a strong emphasis on uh, practicality for logic reasons, guys, because you'll be buying it for utility purposes, very likely. But that doesn't mean it's not desirable. Check out the comfort features. Let's take a look at this. So over here is your infotainment system, guys. The infotainment system gets the work done. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing out of the extraordinary. But whatever it is, it gets the job done. And this is the thing about Renault Nissan. And I can confirm. Now, over here, climate controls, guys. It's really good. I like the fact that it's uh, digital as well in the middle. So this is a really cool aspect. It reminds me of what I've seen in the Renault Megane. Uh, now, this part is also really cool. It's time to cover practicality, guys. So over here, you get this uh, flat storage space, which is good for your telephone. Now, over here, you get uh, another space, which is ideal for your telephone. 12-volt socket. Two cup holders of fixed sizes, uh, but there's no, yeah, there's nothing here that opens, although it would be nicer if there was a little drawer here. Speaking of drawers, though, you do get one, and it's right here. That's right, guys, this is your drawer, and believe it or not, it's a double storage drawer. You uh, basically can use this as your drawer, 
as your storage space and that place underneath where you see the papers the idea of having a drawer was actually in the Renault Espace Geno took it from the Espas and they brought it here, guys. Now, I have to say bravo for this. I love this concept. It's very innovative. It's awesome. But when it comes to practicality, you just have to get used to it, okay? Because, for instance, I can't reach the papers that are all the way in the corner there. So it's a bit of a work to reach them. But eventually, as you keep things organized, you'll get used to it. And it's amazing to live with. If you don't want to keep those papers there, just put them right here, guys. But... Uh, I would not recommend this because it'll reflect onto the window and that's annoying. So maybe you'd want to put them here. Well, maybe not. But on the bright side, you get a USB point there and you get a 12 volt socket there. Wow. And to make things even more interesting, you get storage space up here. Wow, this is awesome. Now over here, guys, this is the side door. Uh, now everything here is hard plastic. There's no fabric anywhere. And uh, so, yeah, but I, I like the presentation of things. So window buttons, mirror controls, the handle right here, guys. Door bin right here, guys. Uh, you can fit a big water bottle, but the door bin is not spacious enough. It stops until here. We forgot to cover the central console storage, which I'm very impressed with. It's very deep. I like it. But for some reason, it's all plastic. Like, look at this. It's almost as if someone just glued it together in the factory. Look at the quality. And now, speaking of quality, I'm going to show you all something you should not do. Do not shake this too much, because if you do, it wobbles a lot. So the rest of the interior, everything is well built. Like, let me try to shake this. and It's solid, guys. This is very solid. This is, this is a bit uh, something I wasn't expecting for Renault, but it's awesome. Now, I'm going to show you all a cool feature I really like about Renault. They always have a third stoke, which is dedicated to your media control, and it's right here. So, hands on the steering wheel, ta-da! See, you can control everything easily from the steering wheel. I love this feature. In fact, when I first saw this, it was on a Renault Scenic, I think, in the 2000s. I was always amazed by this feature. It's something extraordinary, and not many competitors actually offer this, except for the PSA group. You get a classic instrument cluster, everyone. Uh, nothing digital, which can be perceived as questionable, guys, but then you all be the judge. Here's my conclusion of the Geno Kongu Electric. This has to be one of the most interesting small van available in the small van segment, guys. And it's one of the best vehicles released by Reno in recent years. I really like this Renault Kongu and I really like the small van, guys. And it's very interesting. 33,000 euros. For a price of 33,000 euros, I think it is great value for money. It's electric. It is well equipped and there are just little options you can add to make it even more interesting. It has so many interesting innovative features to its interior. I agree that maybe the interior was just too much plastic but you don't really get this van for pleasure purposes. You get it for professional purposes guys. Now now the only thing I found questionable about this Renault Kongu is longevity guys. So in the sense we're talking about reliability and uh, long-term dependability guys. It's now, Renault has had problems with all their vehicles in this regard, but it's surely improving. And now in wake of the improvements in the Renault-Nissan alliance, we will see massive changes. And I'm very optimistic about this. Humble opinion of this Renault Kongu. Oh my God, I love it so much. I love this Renault Kongu, guys. This Renault Kongu has to be one of the best small vans I've ever seen. It's electric, it's well-equipped, and it's got everything you need, guys nothing to question the design is fabulous it's also got a very rich history if you think about it because this is the grandchild of Renault utility vehicles guys the small utility vehicles which would always drive in the streets of Paris so don't forget to like comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos that are on the run guys and let me know in the comments what is your favorite small van in the small van segment? Is it the Renault Kongu? Is it the Volkswagen Caddy? Or is it the PSA Group small vans? Like the Peugeot Partner.